claim they can pay for their phenomenally expensive trillion dollar policies without taxing the middle class. But can they? Over the weekend, they floated the idea of a mileage tax and then almost immediately withdrew it for fear of violating their pledge, or at least being seen as doing that. Today, we're hearing about plans of a marriage tax and a death tax on inherited capital gains, but both of those could hit the middle class, too. So is there any way to pay for their massive restructuring of the American economy without pass sticking it to the middle class? Let's bring in Brandon Arnold. He is the National Taxpayers Union Executive Vice President. Good to see you again, Brandon. So can Dems avoid hitting the middle class with higher taxes? In short, no. I don't see any way that they can possibly do go about doing so. And here's what's going to happen. They're going to claim they're going to raise taxes on corporations, and they very well may. I think it's quite possible that we could see that rate go up from 21 to 28 percent. But what happens when you raise taxes on corporations? They pass it down to workers in the form of lower wages. They pass it down to consumers in the form of higher prices for goods and services. So you have indirect taxation hitting people across the economic spectrum, not just Wall Street, Wall Street fat cats, but everyday Americans. And then, you know, you look at the, the tax increase potentially on small businesses that could take place if we increase individual tax rates, even if we don't raise taxes on people that are making uh, 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 less than $400,000, those are going to hit everyday workers because those are small businesses that are ultimately paying those taxes. When they have less resources to invest in their workforce, in the people that they employ, that means Everyday Americans are once again right. left holding the bag. And, you know, the, the other thing is corporate tax is is only, what, less than 10 percent of the, the total amount of taxes uh, collected, or maybe it's something like 12 percent. The bottom line is, though, it's it's income tax. That's where the government really makes its money. Yeah, that's right. The the individual income tax is where the bulk of the money comes into the, the into the federal treasury. Corporate taxes tend to be very uh, capital tends to be very mobile, meaning corporations yeah. can shift capital from this country to other countries. Well, Brandon, what we did in 2017 was encourage investment in this country. That was a good thing that created jobs. It created a very strong economy that drove right. up wages. But if we raise those taxes, the corporate corporate corporations can can push that money elsewhere. Of course, the smaller businesses don't have that luxury. What about have to pay what about tax. a wealth tax? Uh, there's there's a lot of questions about whether it would be constitutional. The Supreme Court would likely uh, take a jab at, at that issue. But just assuming for the moment that it passes muster with the Supreme Court, which is a big assumption, uh, would that be enough to pay for Absolutely all these not. big spending plans? So when you look at a wealth tax, you know, all the billionaires in, in this country have about four trillion dollars. So even if we took all of that money away from them, we took all of their assets and turned that into to revenues for the federal treasury, it wouldn't be enough to pay for Biden's plan in all likelihood. Yeah. But look at European countries. Seventy five percent of the European countries that tried a wealth tax abandoned it, right. not because they suddenly fell in love with billionaires. They certainly did not. But because it's so impossibly difficult to administer. Well, the, and the also all, just of the, all of the wealth walked away. I mean, uh, capital can move. And that's what that's what people did with their capital. They moved it to different countries. I just got to ask you about another issue with regard to taxing the wealthy, because the amount, the, the percent of of the tax revenues that they pay is just extraordinary. The top 50 percent of taxpayers, that is the richest half of the country, pays 97 percent of all the individual income tax. Uh, about 3 percent pay for the remaining uh, are, are under 50 percent. But this one really gets me. In 2018, the top 1 percent, the wicked 1 percent paid 40 percent of all individual income taxes. The bottom 90 percent paid 28 percent. So uh, aren't we already squeezing the wealth just as about as much as we could before it goes to another country? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the notion that the wealthy don't pay their fair share, that's great populist rhetoric, and it gets a lot of applause when Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders says that out at their political rallies. But the truth is somewhat different. The truth is the wealthy are paying a considerable amount of taxes, yeah. the majority of taxes. We don't want to shift that income tax burden down the ladder. We don't want to shift that onto everyday working Americans. But when you start pushing wealthy people out of this country, that's what tends to happen. And that's, that's, the real and that's when you get the rise in middle class taxes. And uh, some people say it's, it's practically inevitable with the amount of money that they are spending. Now, Brendan Arnold, thank you very much. Good to see you. I appreciate it. Well, one American in prison.